fasten your sofa belt, because now from 415 feet above mean sea level, the highest elevation inside the city limits of Tallahassee, the former capital of the Creek Nation, the home of the Council Rock and the Council Tree, the birthplace of Chief Osceola, the city from which Tulsa, Oklahoma derives its name, the worldwide headquarters of Neptune Technology Group and AES. From the great state of Alabama, from the Saturn V rocket that welcomes you from Tennessee on I-65 to the United States battleship Alabama of the South Dakota class displacing 35,000 tons of water in Mobile Bay. From the United States of America with a government that is limited to certain enumerated powers in order that the people might be free. We now bring you a moment at midweek to lift our hearts to the Lord. We bring you the Midweek Moment from the First Baptist Church. And how do we feel about it all? We're glad you tuned in. And welcome to the Midweek Moment. Welcome to the Midweek Moment. Thanks for tuning in. This Sunday is our final Sunday of Drive-In Church. At the conclusion of the service, there will be a church conference. We ask church members to stick around for a few minutes for that. Starting June 7th, we will begin lawn chair worship services. But for those in high-risk groups who need to be a little more careful, we will have places to park cars drive-in style. The services in June will be at a new time at 6.30 p.m., we will see how that works. This will place us in the shade and will be a little cooler in the summer weather. Nothing right now is ideal, so we just have to find the best way we can to do things and trust everyone to do the best they can to make things work. While life is moving forward, like a dimmer switch gradually turning the lights on, we are slowly moving toward things getting back to normal. One of the happier things right now is that our seniors are graduating from high school. We have a class that is smaller in number this year, but full of accomplishments. Let's let Brandon tell us about them now. First up, we have J.D. Barentine. His future plans is working HVAC this summer and then later attending Southern Union in the fall. He wishes to transfer to Auburn University to major in horticulture. He would like to thank Derek Gentle, Brandon Fomby, Wayne Pitchford, Leslie Swikert, Brad Davis, Shanda Parker, Stephen Ingram, Lee Patterson, and Josh Cochran. Next, we have Natalie Davis. She will be attending Auburn University to study nursing. She would like to thank Brother Derek, Brandon and Lauren Fomby, Wayne Pitchford, and Leslie Swikert for helping her grow in God's Word. She'd also like to thank Uncle Glenn Baggett and Aunt Janine Pitchford for taking care of her when she was a baby in the nursery. Lastly, she would like to thank her parents for making church a priority and making her into the woman she is today. Next, we have Beth East. She will be attending Auburn University and will be partaking in the pre-graphic design program and hopefully earning a spot in the professional program at the end of her freshman year. She would like to thank Ms. Leslie Swiker for showing her how to love God, others, and herself. Next, we have Reese Graham. His plan is to attend Southern Union State Community College this fall, and he would like to thank Brother Derek and Brandon Fomby for always showing an interest in them as students and setting such a godly example for them to follow. Next, we have Meredith Holly. Her future plans are going to the University of South Alabama and majoring in English as a second language to teach Korean exchange students. She would also like to thank Brandon Fomby and Lauren Fomby, Miss Leslie Swikert and Wayne Pitchford and the praise team for being there for her and helping her through everything. Next we have Lyndon Oliver. She will be attending the University of Alabama this fall. She would like to thank Miss Leslie Swikert, Mr. Wayne Pitchford and Brandon Fomby for, for being so supportive. From supporting her in her walk with God to attending as many school events as they could. 
She wants to thank them for being there for her and to thank her church family for your prayers and love throughout the years. Next, we have Ansley Osborne. Ansley will be attending Huntington this fall to play softball, and she plans to major in occupational therapy and become a pediatric occupational therapist. She would like to thank Brandon Fomby, Leslie Swickard, and Wayne Pitchford. Next, we have Jace Taylor. Jace's future plans are to attend Southern Union State Community College this fall to be enrolled in one of their technical programs. Jace and his family recently joined First Baptist Tallahassee, but before that, they were members at Russianville Baptist and elected. He would like to thank Gary Ingram, who was a member at Russianville, for being a great mentor from the time he was a little until he left Russianville Baptist. He was his RA leader, Sunday school teacher, and youth leader. Finally, we have Chance Vaughn. Chance is on his way to play Division I baseball in the Sun Belt Conference for Arkansas Little Rock. Chance would like to thank God first and foremost, his mom Ellen and stepdad Ricky, his father Craig and stepmother Stephanie, all of his grandparents, and his coaches and teammates from Mobile Christian. Congrats, seniors, class of 2020. We love you and we mean it. We come now to our prayer time. Tonight, we will focus in our prayer time on people in two categories. First, the graduating seniors from Tallahassee High School, all the graduates, but especially those who are part of our church family. Second, let's pray for those who are in graduating classes behind them. Please think about people you know in these two categories, and then join me in praying and help me as I pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your faithfulness from one generation to the next. You are the God of the ages, eternal and immutable, unchanging. One generation shall proclaim your praises to the next. We pray, Lord, tonight for our graduates. Even in the midst of this pandemic, this is a shining counterpoint, a happy completion, and a hopeful beginning. Lord, we pray for the graduates in our church family and others, not from our church family. We remember to you this graduating class from Tallahassee High School. We pray for those taking their next step in life. Some are headed to college, some to the military. Some will start their careers. Some know right where they're going. Give them a humble spirit that they might always rely on you. We pray for other graduates who have no clue what to do next. They are unsure of their way. Show them the direction to go. Many kind of know what to do next. We ask that you would keep showing them their next step on the right path. We pray for students who will now have freedom like they have never had before. Some will not know how to handle that much freedom. We ask you to give each one a plan to use their time wisely and a desire to honor you with their freedom rather than to cast off all restraint. We pray that wherever they go, each graduate will run into likable people who will have a godly influence on them. And we pray that each graduate who knows you will be an influencer instead of the one influenced. We pray for the believers among the graduates that each one of them will use his or her influence for Christ. Be with them and bless them. Lord, we pray tonight for the students and the classes behind the graduates. There are underclassmen whose turn it is to step up and be the leaders in their youth groups. There are some who need to step up and witness to friends and classmates. There are some who are at a point in life when it might please you to call them into the ministry or missions. It's been a little while since we had one answer that call at First Baptist. We ask that you would thrust forth laborers into the harvest. And Lord, there are others in high school and middle school, and they have yet to trust you for salvation. Please work in their hearts to grant them understanding and the repentance and the faith they do not yet have. 
we ask that you would send us a time of harvest. We pray these things together in agreement, not based on any merits of our own, but Lord, we pray these things together in Jesus' name, amen. Yesterday, we finished reading the prison epistles, and today we begin reading the Psalms of Ascent. These are Psalms 120 through 134. The word ascent literally means going up. Most Christian Bible scholars believe that these hymns were sung by pilgrim bands on their way to the three great festivals of the Jewish year and to worship at the temple. That would mean Jesus sang these very songs on his way to Jerusalem, and they are meaningful psalms for us to read as we take the incremental steps we're taking in the direction of getting back in church. The journey to Jerusalem was called a going up. Regardless of the direction from which one came, it was literally going up in elevation and altitude as well as in spiritual aspiration and attitude. These Psalms have differing authors. Four are written by David, one by Solomon, and the rest are anonymous. So they were written at different times and later grouped together as good Psalms to sing on one's way to Jerusalem. Thus, these were songs to prepare one's heart for worship. They focused one's mind on the God one would be worshiping. They reminded the worshiper of God's blessings in the past. They encouraged the worshiper to trust the Lord in the face of overwhelming odds. They called the worshiper to live faithfully, even when surrounded by ungodly people. And such is our psalm for today. In Psalm 120, we are reminded that the Jewish people were sometimes scattered and dispersed among the nations. When the northern kingdom of Israel fell, when the southern kingdom of Judah was carried away in the Babylonian exile, and at other times when warfare and economic conditions caused families to flee, the Jewish people through the years of the biblical times and in centuries since have been a scattered people, and though dispersed, a distinct people. That is the underlying assumption of Psalm 120. To help us understand the psalm from this vantage point, let's consider the thoughts of this passage in reverse order. Verse 7 says, I am for peace when I speak, they are for war. The psalmist is saying that he aspires to be part of a community of peace, yet he lives in a culture of conflict. God's people living in the world represent different value systems because they value different things. In verse 6, he says, I have lived too long with those who hate peace. In verse 5, we see two places far removed from the other, given as examples of how dispersed the Jewish people were, Meshach and Kedar. Meshach was a people on the southeastern edge of the Black Sea, a thousand miles to the north of Jerusalem. Kedar was nowhere near there. They were a people dwelling in the Arabian desert who were descended from Ishmael. Their land was to the east of Israel. These two people groups serve as samples of the whole pagan Gentile world into which God's people had been dispersed. The psalmist experienced among these peoples had in many ways been a misery. The King James translates it more literally, woe is me. Notice how he lived among the tents of Kedar, a temporary living arrangement for a nomadic people. The word for stayed means he was a sojourner. That is a, a person who is staying somewhere for a while, but who is not from there and is there only temporarily. This land was not his home, and this world is not our home either. Verses 2 through 4 show that he lives not only in a culture of conflict, but also among a people with a culture of deceit. In verse 2, the psalmist prays, Lord, deliver me from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. He doesn't want to fall victim to the lies of others around him, nor does he want to fall into the same pattern of deception himself. We are supposed to be the counterculture, not part of the culture. Verses 3 through 4 speak of the judgment coming upon deceitful people. What will he give you, and what will he do to you, you deceitful tongue? A warrior's sharp arrows. 
those with sly, sharp tongues of deception will face the sharp arrows of God's judgment. In verse 4, he speaks of the wood of the broom tree, which can be used to make excellent charcoal, which becomes a hot fire and retains its heat for a long time. This is a second word picture of their punishment to come. In God's time, he will administer justice to the world around us. We, as his people, may carry ourselves with confidence because of this fact. We only appear to be the losers, and only for a little while. And finally, as we have worked our way backward through the psalm, we come to verse 1, the thesis sentence of the psalm. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. Since we've worked our way backward to it, the thesis sentence now makes sense in its context. As God's people, living in a pagan world, we often find ourselves in distressing situations. Instead of dealing with these situations by means of deceit or violence like the world around us, God's people should call to the Lord. In some translations, this word is translated cried out. It is not the call of the self-confident, but of those who know they are out of options, that their human resources are inadequate for the need. And notice what happens next. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. See you Sunday in the parking lot, or see you on the internet. This has been the Midweek Moment. Thanks for watching. Thank you.